Hello, this is the video for 13.4, which I believe is called differentials. Um, yes. So I'm going to go ahead and go through the problems. Now, I think there's only eight or nine. It depends on if there's a video. No video. So there are nine questions. So we are going to go ahead and um, go through these nine problems. So for the first one, it says Z equals 3x to the fourth, y to the fifth. And it's asking me for the total differential. And so we basically, to find the total differential, is we're taking the derivative of z with respect to x and then multiplying it by dx plus the derivative of z with respect to y and multiplying that by dy, okay? And so then I'm just going to go ahead and go in and start filling in these values. So um, in the instance where I'm taking the derivative of x, 3y to the fifth will act as a constant multiplier. And then the derivative of x to the fourth is going to be 4x to the third. Now for the derivative of z with respect to y, now this is going to be the constant multiplier. And the derivative of y to the fifth is 5y to the fourth. And then all I can do really is just clean this up a little bit. So that's actually 12x cubed y to the fifth. Oops, and I dropped my dx somehow. But that's OK. I was going to remember to bring it in down here. <laughs> and then here we have 15x to the fourth y to the fourth dy. And so that's what I'm going to type into my box. So bear with me while I type this in there, I'm trying very carefully not to make any typos. And let's check it. Okay, yes, I see our first green check, awesome. Okay, now we're gonna move on to number two. And so here we have Z equal, and we basically have two terms now. Okay, oops, I don't know why I put the minus sign there. But it's eight X cubed Y minus um, three X to the ninth Y to the seventh. So bear with me, I'm just trying to um, I'm just trying to get another eraser because my eraser is like really, really, really tiny. Okay, now I have another one. Okay. So when I go to calculate the total differential, it's going to be the derivative with respect to x plus the derivative with respect to y dy. Now the derivative with respect to x, this eight and this y are gonna be my constant multipliers. And the derivative of x cubed is three x squared. Here, three and y to the seventh are my constant multipliers. And the derivative of x to the ninth is eight x to the eighth. Okay, and I'll clean both of those terms up in the next um, line. Now again, doing the derivative with respect to y, um, this eight x cubed acts as the constant multiplier and the derivative of y is one. Um, three x to the ninth acts like the constant multiplier and the derivative of y to the seven is seven y to the sixth. So when I clean this up, it's going to be 24 x squared y minus 24 x to the eight y to the seventh dx plus 8x cubed minus 21x to the ninth y to the sixth times dy. And you definitely want to keep it with the parentheses with dx on the outside and dy on the outside. So bear with me. This is a lot to type in. Um, it does take a little bit of time. The longer something takes, the more chances there are for error, but we're just going to try.
Okay, let me get rid of that box and let me make sure that that looks like what's on my paper before I hit enter. Okay, submit. Oh, nope, it did not like that answer. So I must have made an error somewhere. So let's see, when we did the derivative with respect to x, that was my constant. This was 3x squared. So then this and this make 24x squared y. So I know that term's correct. Then here, these were my constant multipliers. Oh, I brought down the nine, but I put eight for some reason. My brain was going too fast. So three times nine is actually 27. Um, here, these guys were my multiplier, derivative of that is one. This was my multiplier, and I did that one correctly. Um, so eight and 21. Okay, so it looks like just this 24 needs to be changed to a 27. Let's see if that will fix it. Yes, now it likes it, okay. Okay, number three, this one says W equals 2x plus y over 10z minus 6y. So if you notice, this is a function or a relationship in three variables. So when we go to find the total differential dw, we're going to have to do wx dx wy dy, and we're going to have to do wz dz, okay? Um, but we do need to put, do all of the variables. I'm gonna scoot this up. I don't think we need all that information anymore. Okay, so there we go. Um, for me particularly, I like to write these as, um, it's so hard to say. Uh, I like to write them in their factored in their um, product form. So I would have the numerator times the denominator to the negative one exponent. Okay. And so, and then I would start, um, and actually, yeah, I would just leave it like that. So I'm gonna do this in pieces because the pieces are very complicated and I cannot do all the steps within this equation, okay? Or within this one line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna calculate Wx first, then Wy, then Wz, and then put them in the differential equation, okay? This one here. So Wx, um, none of this has any Xs in it. So all of that is like my constant multiplier. Okay, but this does have x's in it. So I do need to take the derivative of each of these terms. And the derivative of that with respect to x is two, and the derivative of y with respect to x is zero. So ultimately what I end up with is two and then 10z minus six y to the negative one. Or that can be thought of as two over 10z minus six y, okay? Now I'm gonna do similarly the same thing for wy. So for wy, um, this both of these have y's in them, so I am going to have to use my product rule. So I'm gonna do the first factor times the derivative of the second factor. So I'm gonna bring down that negative one, decrease the power by one more, and then take the derivative on the inside with respect to y. So the derivative of this with respect to y is zero. The derivative of this term with respect to y is six. Then I'm gonna put a plus sign and I'm not gonna fit that in there. So I'm gonna put the second term. Oops, negative one exponent. The second factor times the derivative of the first factor. So the derivative of 2x with respect to y is zero, and the derivative of y with respect to y is just one. So if I clean this up, 
Um, this is a negative six times a negative one, which is positive six. And then the second term is just a one times this, so it's gonna stay this. And then if I factor out what they have in common, I have to take the lower exponent. So I'm gonna take the negative two, which means all of this is gone and I have six times two X plus Y. But then here, if I take negative one minus a negative two, cause I took negative two out, that's actually negative one plus two, which is one. So I have 10 Z minus six to the one power. And so then inside here, I'm gonna have 12X plus 6Y plus 10Z minus six. And then if we wanna write that as a fraction, it would be 12X plus 6Y plus 10Z minus six over 10Z minus 6Y squared. Okay, and that's for WY. Now we're gonna go over here and do WZ. I'm not gonna fit WZ right there. So let me write it a little bit lower. It's not gonna fit in this little chunk, okay? So I'm gonna put it a little bit lower so I can at least have more space. So WZ. Um, well, this one might not be too bad because there's no Zs in this factor, which means this factor is like a constant multiplier. So I'm really only taking the derivative of this part. So I'm gonna bring down my power. I'm going to decrease my power by one, and then I'm gonna multiply by the derivative of what's inside. The derivative of this with respect to Z is 10. The derivative of this term with respect to Z is zero. And so then we end up with negative 10 times two X plus Y. And then this guy being downstairs would be, um, 10z minus 6y squared. Um, and I can distribute that. Not that I need to, but I can. Okay, so now we have an expression for dz. So let's go ahead and put it all together in our differential. Let me click there, there we go. So DW is going to be this DX plus this one. And then plus this one. and dz. I think I missed the dy. Definitely have to have the dx, the dy, and the dz in order for it to count it correct, okay? But this is going to be what I'm going to type into this box. So, oh my goodness, bear with me. This is going to be challenging, but we're going to get there. So, 10z minus 6y. Put a dx next to it plus fraction again, 12x plus 6y plus 10z minus 6 over parentheses 10z minus 6y and then square it. Now get down, get down. Um, and I need to put the dy right there. Okay, I'm gonna have to move this outward just so I can see. There we go. I'm going to go to the right, dy plus, does that look right? 12x plus 6y plus 10z minus 6. Okay, so far so good. Now I'm going to do negative 20x minus 10y. And I have an extra 5 in there for some reason. 
and then go downstairs. Now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to see if I can copy this and paste it. Yeah, you can. And then put DZ. Now I hope I didn't make an error because then it just makes it harder to find it the longer these problems are. You oh, did make an error somewhere. Okay, let's see. Um, let me scoot this over again so we can see. Think. So this is a constant multiplier. So derivative of this, derivative of that. So that I'm pretty confident in. And that's what I have up there. So I'm pretty confident in the first term. I think the second term is the one where I might have made a mistake. So let's see, we did the first factor times the derivative of the second factor plus the second factor times the derivative of the first factor. So then we had negative six times negative one was positive six, this guy, this guy, and then one's just the same thing. Then we took out this, oh, I see where I made my mistake right here. I should have had um, minus six y. So minus six y, minus six y, minus six y. And now that makes sense because then the six y and the minus six y would cancel. And so I should really only have 12 x plus 10 z at the top. And so the same thing here, I should only have 12 x plus 10 z on top. So let's go fix that part of the fraction and see what happens. Let's see if that was my only error or if there was something else going on. We'll find out real fast. Oh yeah, that was it, okay. <laughs> so be very, very careful. I just dropped the Y out of nowhere. Um, and you just have to be very careful because there's so many variables now <laughs> that it's really easy to do that, obviously. Um, let's keep going. And I was trying my hardest not to make an error, but it just happens. You just have to be very, very, very meticulous with so many variables in the picture now. Okay, so number four, this one wants us also to find the total differential. So we have X, cosine of y minus y um, cosine of x. So we only have two variables here. So we're going to do our dz. And we're going to take the derivative with respect to x first. So this is like a constant multiplier. And the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. Here, this is like the constant multiplier and the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. And so that's all for dx. Now we'll simplify that in a little bit, okay? Now we're gonna do the derivative with respect to y. So here the x acts like the constant multiplier and the derivative of cosine y is negative sine of y minus here, cosine x acts like my constant multiplier, and the derivative of y is 1. And I'm going to have a dy on the side of that. I just didn't have room in my paper. So we get that dz equals 1 times cosine of y is cosine of y. A negative and a negative will give me positive y sine of x with my dx. Here we have negative x sine of y and one times cosine is just going to be cosine of x and then my dy and so bear with me i gotta type all of that in there so parentheses cosine of x oh i already opened up that parentheses um plus y sine and it already opened a parentheses so i'm just going to stick x in there and then do dx plus 
parentheses, negative x sine of y. I need to move this over a little bit. Um, sine of y minus cosine of x and then dy. And let's check it and see if we got that in there correctly. Okay, I have cosine, oh, I made a typo. This should have been cosine of y. Look at my paper, I have cosine of y, but for some reason I typed in cosine of x. So let me just double check that the rest of it has the right letters. Okay, there we go. So now number five, we have e to the nine x sine of seven y. So we're gonna do dx first. So this is just going to be a constant multiplier since there's no x's in it. Um, but then when I take the derivative of this, it's gonna be e to the nine x times the derivative of the exponent, which is just nine. So all of that times dx. Plus, now I'm gonna take the derivative with respect to y. So this is a constant multiplier. And the derivative of sine is cosine. But since my angle is not just a single variable, I have to actually take the derivative of that angle. That's the chain rule. And the derivative of seven y is seven. And then I'm gonna attach my dy. So in this term, I'm gonna end up with nine e to the nine x sine of seven y dx. And for my second term, I'm gonna end up with seven e to the nine x cosine of seven y and then the dy. And again, these things are super lengthy, so bear with me. I'm gonna to try to type this all in here. Um, nine e to the nine sine of seven y dx plus seven e to the nine x. Oh, I forgot the x up here. and then nine x, there we go. And then cosine of seven y, and then a dy. So nine e to the nine x sine of seven y dx, seven e to the nine x cosine of seven y dy. Um, your answer could not be understood or greeted. Oh, I put an equals instead of a plus sign. Plus, there we go. I was so paying attention to the terms and didn't even realize there was an equal sign in the middle. <laughs> okay, focus, focus, focus. W equals e to the six y cosine of five X and then Z to the eight. So now we're back with W. So we know that when we have W, we have three variables, X, Y, and Z, okay? So this is one of those long ones again. Um, we can do it in pieces, but I don't think that's necessary because everybody seems to be separate. So I am just gonna go straight for it, okay? So the derivative with respect to X, there's two terms, okay? And the derivative of this term with respect to x is that this is my constant multiplier. And the derivative of cosine of five x is going to be negative sine of five x, but times the derivative of this because of the chain rule, which is five. Plus the derivative of this term with respect to x is just zero. There's no x's in it, so it's like a constant, and the derivative of a constant is just zero. Then now we're gonna do the derivative of each term with respect to y. So this is like my constant multiplier, and the derivative of that is e to the six y times the derivative of that exponent, that chain rule again. 
Um, and then plus the derivative of this term with respect to y is just zero. I know it looks like I'm running out of space and I am, but I don't really need a lot of space for the next one because there's no z's in this first term, which means that acts like an entire constant and the derivative of a constant is zero. And then the derivative of this with respect to z would be eight z to the seven and then multiply my dz right there. So I know it's super crammed in there. Let me see if I can move this over a little bit. There we go. Now you can kind of see all of it in one um, screen, okay? I'm just gonna clean it up now. So dw equals, this is gonna be a negative five e to the six y sine of five x. No second term, so I don't need this giant parentheses plus um, this is gonna be six e to the six y cosine of five x. Again, that is second term, so I don't need these big parentheses. And then there's no second term here, so it's just eight z to the seven dz. Oh, and now bear with me again, cause I gotta type it all in, right? It's, <laughs> I feel like this is the most tedious part of the assignment is typing this stuff in. Um, e to the six y. Oh, let me see my five. Five e to the six y. Nine of five x. Oops. Okay. Plus six e to the six y. Cosine of five x dy plus 8z to the 7 dc. Now I'm going to expand this just to make sure that I got it all in there correctly. So 5e to the 6 y sine of 5x dx, 6e to the 6y cosine of 5x dy. Oh, that's not correct. There we go. And then 8 z7 dz. Okay, let's see. Okay, yay. Finally got one right the first try. So we get to number seven. f of xy equals seven x minus five y. And it says find f of seven three then find f of 7.1, 3.05, okay? And so then, oops, I did not mean to do that. Oh, what number am I on? Number seven. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's go find um, f of seven and three. So that means seven gets plugged in for x and three gets plugged in for y. So we get 49 minus 15, which is, I'm being lazy, 34. Now we're gonna do F of 7.1 comma 3.05. So we're gonna do seven times 7.1 minus five times 3.05. So seven times 7.1. Five times 3.05 is 15.25. And then 49.7 minus 15.25 is going to be 34.45. Now they're asking me for the, the change, okay? So we're going to take the second one going to take this value and subtract the original value, which is going to be 34.45 minus 34, and that difference is 0 .0, or 0 0.45. Okay. Then now it says for part B, use the total differential dz to approximate the delta z, okay? 
So we know that dz is going to be the derivative of this with respect to y, which is going to be 7 minus 0 dx plus the derivative with respect to y is going to be 0 minus 5 dy. So we get 7 dx oh, minus 5 dy. OK, so what is dx and what is dy? That is based on the values. So dx is actually going to be the second y x value minus the first x value, which is 0 0.1. dy is going to be 3.05 minus 3, which is 0 0.05. So if I plug those values into this equation, we get that dz is 7 times 0 0.1 minus 5 times 0 0.05. So 7 times 0.1 is 0 0.7, and 5 times 0 0.005 is um, 0 0.005. And if I take 0 0.7 minus 0 0.25, I end up with 0 0.45, just the same as before, okay? We did have 0 0.5 before as well, okay? So I'm gonna type in all these numbers. Let's see, 34, 34.45. Now it's coincidence because this is pretty linear um, that the numbers are exactly the same but they aren't always exactly the same, but they are very close, okay? So just be mindful of that because if you do happen to get a different value, it may not necessarily be that you did anything wrong. It may just be that the approximation is not the exact value of the um, delta Z. Okay, so let's try the same thing, but with number eight. So number eight is very, very similar. This time our f of x, y is y e to the x. And so we're gonna do f of two comma one, which is one for y and two for x. We just get e squared. Um, and then f of 2.5 comma 1.05 we get 1.05 e to the 2.5. And we'll just leave it like that. Then if I wanna find delta z, I'm basically gonna take the second value and subtract the first value. So the second z to get the first v, and it says rounder answers to four decimal faces. So let's see what these are to four decimal places. On clear, e squared is 7.3891, because this five will make that zero go to a one. And then 1.05e to the 2.5 is actually 12.7916. This one is not enough to make the six go up. And then now if I do 1.05 e to the 2.5 minus e squared, I get about 5.4026 because this six will make the five go up, okay? So if that's what we get, that's fine. But now let's do the delta, um, the dz. So the derivative of this with respect to x, y is the constant multiplier, and the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Then e to the x is the constant multiplier, and the derivative of y is 1, dy. So we get y e to the x dx plus um, e to the x dy. Okay, so what is x, what is y, what is delta or dx dy? Okay, dx is going to be the second x value minus the first. 
dy is going to be the second y value minus the first. And then um, x is going to be the original x and y is going to be the original y, which was one, two and one. So let's see, dz will be one times e to the two times dx, which is 0 0.5 plus e to the two times um, dy, which is 0 0.05. And so we get um, we get 0 0.5 e squared plus 0 0.05 e squared, which is the same as saying 0 0.55 e squared. Um, but I don't know what that is as far as a decimal. So 0 0.55 e squared is 4.063. Um, this eight would make that go to 40. So it should be 40, not 39. Okay. Now I do wanna make sure that I did pick the right X values and I shouldn't have picked the 2.5 and the 1.05. So just give me one second. Okay, I figured out what was going on um, I was second guessing this problem because they're so different from one another, although they're close, but they're not real close. Um, so I was second guessing that this was gonna be incorrect. So I typed all my answers in. I typed in this for the first Y value, this for the second Y value. I typed in this for Delta Z, and then I typed in this for DZ. Now I did get three check marks on this one, this one, and this one, but I didn't get a check mark here, okay? And the reason why is because they did not take the exact values to find this difference. What they did instead was they took the approximations. Since they had already asked you to round these, they just did 12.7916 minus 7.3891, and they obtained 5.4025. And this is what they entered into the uh, third box here for delta Z. And so you notice when I changed it to um, 0.25 or 0 0.4025 instead of 0 0.4026, it finally gave me that green um, check mark. Okay. So make sure that when you're doing the DZ part, if it's asking you to round and you actually needed to round, that you use the rounded versions to calculate delta Z. Okay. Um, but we did eventually. I was second guessing one part and that wasn't even the issue. <laughs> it was a whole nother part that had um, a little something that I needed to mention. Okay, so number nine, we're gonna take our new function f of x, y, and this one says y over x. Um, for later, I'm gonna use this as y, x to the negative one, but that's for later when I have to do dz. For now, we're gonna do what they ask us to do, which is plug in 32 and 16. So we're gonna plug in um, 16 for y and 32 for x, and we get 0 0.5. 16 divided by 32, 0 0.5. Then we're gonna plug in 32.5 comma 16.25. And so we get 16.25 for y, 32.5 for x, Oops, and when I divide those, I get 0 0.5. So when you're calculating dz, I'm sorry, delta z, you're going to take the second value, 0 0.5, minus the first value, which happens to also be 0 0.5. So for this delta, I get zero. And so for delta Z, I end up with zero. Now let's do the same thing, but using the differentials. So we're gonna say DZ equals, and the derivative of this with respect to Y is Y is the constant multiplier. The negative one will come down and I will decrease the power by one. So that's for DX. Plus the derivative with respect to Y, this is the constant multiplier. And the derivative of Y is one with respect to Y. So this becomes negative y over x squared 
dx plus one over x dy. Now, remember that dx is going to be the second x value minus the first x value. dy is going to be um, the second y value minus the first y value. And then we know x is the original x and y is the original y. So we're gonna plug all of this into our dz calculator over here. So negative 16 over 32 squared times dx, which is 0 0.5, plus one over this x value times dy, which is 0 0.25. I have too many zeros in there. It's just 0 0.25. So let's see what we get here. Negative 16 over 32 squared um, times 0.5. I get this decimal. And then one over 32 times 0.25, I get this decimal. And they happen to be the same, one positive, one negative. So I do get zero for DZ as well. Okay, yes, we got all checks. So now we have completed 13.4 um, and we'll be talking about 13.5 really, really soon.